Hello and welcome to the shiny things. A classic dress watch for review today, but not a simple three-hander, this one has a couple of interesting complications and generally quite an impressive watch for the price. Not all is perfect about it though, or is it? Let's have a closer look and find out. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you already subscribed, thank you and very warm welcome back. And if you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, it does help us to bring you more reviews. I picked up this watch on AliExpress for $68. I will leave the link in the description. The store I bought it from was very quick to dispatch. Also, they had this particular dial version which I personally find more legible and more interesting. Pani's official store also has this watch, however, with a different dial, which I found to be a bit plain for my liking. The key attraction to me was the complications and the quality of finishing on the movement. But to be quite honest, I was pleasantly surprised by the whole package. Also, this watch is not particular homage to any other watches. Well, almost. I'll explain in a moment. Which could be a good news if you're looking for some originality in the design. Of course, there is nothing groundbreaking in a power reserve indicator and retrograde date, and there are quite a few Swiss brands that implement these complications in a very similar dial arrangement. And yet, I think this watch maintains its level of originality. Well, <laughs> almost, like I said, if you don't count this watch from Seagull themselves, which uses the same Seagull movement, this one can be used for around $260 US. But first things first, just in case you are under impression that this is a cheap under power movement with a bit of decoration on it, let me tell you, this is not the case. Yes, Siegel produces some entry point basic workhorse movements, however, this is only part of their production output. As a matter of fact, Siegel is the oldest watch manufacturer in China and it is the largest producer of watch movements in the world. It produces more than 5 million movements a year, which is about a quarter of all movements produced worldwide. So these guys know a thing or two about movements. And we are not talking just to basic, workhorse, low-end movements. Siegel produces a range of sophisticated, highly accurate movements with various complications, including two beyonds. Okay, enough of history and statistics, what is in the box? Well, <laughs> this part of the video will be pretty quick, because there is no box to start with. Okay, there is a polystyrene box and a bubble wrap, so the watch is very well protected from knocks and bumps. However, as you might have guessed, there is nothing else apart from the watch inside. No paperwork or user manual. To be honest, for 68 US dollars, this is not a deal breaker for me personally. This watch has a diameter of 42.7 mm, lug width is 22 mm, lug tip to lug tip is 51.2 mm. The height of the watch is 14.8 mm, which is a bit on the high side for a dress watch, I have to say. I guess the height of the movement contributes to this in some degree. And the watch weighs 107 grams on a supplied leather strap. Comparatively short lug to lug distance helps for this watch to sit snugly on the wrist. However, if you have smaller than 7 inch wrist, keep in mind that this is not a small watch. Here it is on my about 7 inch wrist. There is a minute chapter ring and applied indices for our markers. Polish indices enhance play nicely in the light and look very classy in my opinion. The steel sword type hands are very easy to read in plain light. However, I noticed during filming that at some light angle, the hands seem to merge into the background of the dial. A bit of a strange effect, because in a normal daylight, the watch is quite legible. The dial texture is interesting and is three-dimensional rather than a flat print, which makes it look definitely more sophisticated. I'm not a big fan of an open heart arrangement, however, here it seems to be right at home. As a matter of fact, I think it balances the other two subdials quite nicely. There is no loom on the watch, which is generally okay for a dress watch. Also, the dial is not cluttered with the wording, and the font for the word automatic is chosen in line with the classic look of the watch. The word Panis, however, is still written in kind of corporate font. I think Panis could possibly sell a lot more watches if they gave their logo design a second thought. Moving on to the case, we have a horizontal brushing and well mirror polished top of the lugs and the bezel. The case finishing is consistent and of a good quality for this price point. Lugs are nicely curved down, which improves the way the watch sits on the wrist. There is also a vertical brushing between the lugs, which is good and indicates attention to details. However, the brushing between the lugs is a bit more coarse compared to the flanks of the case. 
I have to note that there is a somewhat sharpish edge to the bottom of the lugs, which personally I wouldn't even notice if I wasn't looking for it. However, this is somewhat I think you should be aware of if you're considering purchasing this watch. All in all, a good quality case execution. The unsigned crown is well proportioned, it is easy to grip and operate. Panis states a 30 meter water resistance for this watch, which is okay for a dress watch. Moving to the back, we have an exhibition case back through which we can see the star of the show, the Seagull ST2505 movement. This is a 38 joules movement, it hacks hand winds and it beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It has a 40 hour power reserve and it feels definitely quite refined. Through the back case we can see how well this movement is finished and decorated. I'm not an expert in movement deco, however from what I can see there is a combination of large and Geneva stripes on the plates and the rotor. Such finishing is usually reserved for mid to high end watches, so seeing this on a $68 watch is very interesting. Further, we have a bridge over the balance wheel which is not only looks nice in my opinion, but also provides additional level of sturdiness to the balance wheel mechanism and can be found on some reputable Swiss movements, like Rolex movement for example. Also not to be overlooked is the actual open hand decoration. There is a second markers on the dial around it and the hand with the decorative three petal wheel does one revolution per minute. This movement has two complications, a power reserve indicator and the flyback or also called retrograde data indicator. There are two crown positions to wind the watch and to set the time. The date is set by the pusher on the opposite to the crown side of the case. This particular watch is quite accurate and so far it's been running at about plus two seconds a day. This watch comes on a 22mm leather strap with a butterfly clasp. It says genuine leather and it is okay for the price. However, if you are not a fan of black crocodile looks, then there are plenty of options out there to replace it with. Personally, I tend to prefer clasp to buckles for a couple of reasons. First, the butterfly clasp is sufficient to make sure I don't drop the watch when I fasten the strap. And second, also quite commonly overlooked fact, the leather straps tend to last longer with the clasps because of the reduced stress to the leather compared to being pulled through the metal buckle every time you have to put on the watch. There are two keepers, one fixed and one floating, so the residual part of the strap can be nicely secured. The strap that the watch ships with will cover about eight and a quarter inch wrist. However, if this is not sufficient, it is quite easy to find a longer replacement strap. Okay, so this $68 watch is perfect all around then, right? Well, not quite. As I promised, I will find something to complain about. Just before I do though, if you're enjoying this video, please give us a like and of course subscribe if you haven't already done so. Okay, so what could have been done better on this watch? Well, first, actually a positive note. Keeping in mind the price point of under $70, I think Panis managed to squeeze every possible value of every dollar that went into manufacturing of this watch. So, in my opinion, if anything can be improved on it, it would most likely come at additional cost. So, number one, and you probably noticed that I haven't actually spoken about it yet, it is crystal. The watch has a nicely domed crystal, however, it is a mineral glass and not sapphire. Sapphire crystal would definitely be an improvement, but would of course cost more. And at number two is branding. I would personally prefer a signed crown and possibly a signed clasp. Sterile in this case just doesn't make sense, especially when you see clearly that this is Parnas on the dial. And, and number three, and this one is not as big as the first two, is the rotor. The rotor is a bit more audible, should I say, than I'm used to. However, since I had this watch for a couple of weeks, it sounds less noisy, or maybe I just stopped noticing this. So, what are your thoughts on this watch? Is it too big? Too plain? Or is it just right for the price? Please let us know in the comments below. And if a dress watch is not your cup of tea and you are more of a Rolex style sports watch fan like the Daytona, Submarino or GMT Master, then check out our other videos. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.